This is the Unstarving Musicians Podcast. I'm your host, Robonzo. This podcast features conversations with me and indie music artists. Conversations intended to help other indie musicians be better at marketing, business, the creative process, and all the other things that empower us to do more of what we love. Make music. Hey there, loyal listeners. Would you like to help other independent musicians find this podcast? Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast service. It really helps. Would you like to support the podcast? Join the Unstarving Musician community. Just go to unstarvingmusician.com and join right there on the homepage. If you're an independent musician, you'll be glad you joined because I share tips and lessons you can use in your music journey. And this isn't just coming from me and my years of experience as a gigging musician. It also comes from the hundreds of other musicians and songwriters I've talked to as part of the Unstarving Musician project, including those I've interviewed for this podcast. And it's all free, just for being part of the community. Another way to support the podcast is to pick up a copy of the Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, How to Get Booked and Paid What You're Worth over and over again. You can get your very own paperback or Kindle version on Amazon, and you can find it just about anywhere fine ebooks are sold. Have you heard of Banzoogle? They've come up on this podcast several times. Many of my guests use it to power their artist website. You may have heard me say in recent episodes that I was contemplating the launch of a subscription-based service of my own. Well, you know what? These guys have it figured out already. I know because I've had the grand tour. I recently signed up for an account, too. You'll see my artist website powered by Banzoogle soon. I just have to untangle it from unstarvingmusician.com. It's complicated, trust me. Banzoogle's not complicated. From garage bands to Grammy winners, Banzoogle powers websites for thousands of musicians around the world. Their simple step-by-step system will get you online fast. Dozens of mobile-friendly templates will help you customize your design and content. It's built for musicians by musicians. Banzoogle has all the features you need for your website and your EPK already built in, including a merch and download store to sell music and merch commission-free right on your website. You can use the tour calendar to promote your shows and sell tickets commission-free, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send professional newsletters, integrations to Pull in content from all of your online services, including Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud, and live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. Plans start at just eight twenty nine dollars a month, which includes hosting and your own free custom domain name. Go to Banzoogle.com to start your 30-day free trial, and be sure to use the promo code ROBONZO to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. That's Banzoogle.com promo code ROBONZO to build your website today. My guest for this episode is Notel, the Nashville-based singer-songwriter who's in the world of heavy, messy pop with an electronic edge. She is at the wonderful point in her music journey of having just emerged from the collaborative world into being a new solo artist. We talk about this extensively, and she's very forthcoming with lessons she's learned and advice that has served her well. She has a great relationship with her PR rep and her producers who come from an outfit called All True Creative, also based out of Nashville. We get into self-doubt, leveraging your uniqueness, the importance of work ethic, preparedness, and quality content around your music. She was really fun to talk to, and I so much enjoyed reviewing our recorded conversation. She is an amazing talent. Check her out at notelmusic.com. That's N-O-T-E-L-L-E. And at Notel Music on the Facebook and Instagram, you'll also find her on Spotify. Here is me and Notel. So we're just going to kind of roll into it. Uh, I'm going to be asking you questions that I hope will be helpful to other musicians. And I thought I would start by asking you about, I don't know if it's your absolute latest, because you've had a lot of stuff coming out lately, but um, your single Power it's got kind of a bluesy yeah. grooves, uh, groove, excuse me, a bluesy groove, which is neat in, given the context of of how how I I see you as genreified. But yeah, tell me a little bit about about the song, maybe you know where it was recorded, who it was with, and any you know any of the good stuff like where it comes from. Yeah, um, it, I recorded it with a producer named Timothy Reismith. Um He has a company, All True Creative, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, it's a great group of. Uh, people there who kind of help work to de- help developing artists kind of work through their sound and help with uh, creative direction and content and all that. So it's a great little hub. 
um, for a new artist, like someone like me. Um, but that song in particular, it was the first one that I did with him. He's helped me do all five of the singles that I will be releasing. Only two are out right now. Um, so it was, it was cool. I think it was the first time that I was ever in a session that was geared specifically towards me and a story that I wanted to tell and a sound that I wanted to create for myself. Um, and not something that I needed to write for somebody else or for a specific project. It was me and I could totally explore, um, anything and everything that I wanted. And he's super open-minded as a person and as a producer. So he kind of helps me create that weird cross genre influence sound that you were kind of picking up on that. I really wanted to, um, dive deeper into. What's, um, what's the other, uh, you mentioned a second single. Um, what, what's the other one? I, I, I want to say the one I think it is, but I'm afraid I'll get it wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's a uh, tell me okay. is the second single that's okay. released. Um, and there'll be three more after that. I think that the third one should come out either May 3rd or May 10th. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, so it should be around whenever I get to show people this conversation. Um, but yeah, but power, I think I released it first, honestly, because it was, it felt like, uh, lyrically and subject matter wise, it was something that was, uh, the most important to me, um, to share. And it did feel kind of like, from my standpoint, a bold move to kind of stamp it as my first single. And it's like kind of my first little venture into solo artistry. Well, we just had a power interruption immediately followed by a non-power related interruption, which all culminated in an interruption in internet connectivity, an interruption in this conversation with Nutel. But here we are back to the conversation. Okay, let's roll again. <laughs> so we, you were, um, you were getting into some really good stuff about your, um, power single and uh tell me also and and all the emotions and the guy you're working with so please tell more um okay (laughs) so uh i was not expecting to jump right into the uh the heaviness of power this soon in the podcast but we might as well just (laughs) get right to it we don't have all day um this song (laughs) is about and i know it's like funny to laugh about it even though the subject is totally not funny but whatever it makes it more relatable i guess um but the song is, uh, it's, it's about like a violent relationship and kind of the, um, kind of like the sexual undertones of that and like how something like that can be really, um, emotional and traumatic and confusing. Um, so yeah, that uh, I think it was, it was a, from my perspective, kind of a, a bold choice for me to make as a first single, um, because I didn't really have anything out there in the world that said, Hey, you know, this is who I am as an artist, just me, not a collaborative thing, not a song that I wrote with somebody else, something I wrote for myself, by myself, you know, with myself in mind and my story in mind. Um, so it did kind of seem like an edgy choice there, but I'm happy I did it. Cause it, it did seem to, to resonate well with people and like people coming out of the woodwork saying, Hey, you know, I, watch the content around the song and I listen to the lyrics and I really enjoy kind of the melodies and the, the genre production behind it. But it's really kind of the message that I was trying to send um, and, and how vulnerable I was trying to be around the release. Um, people really said that it spoke to them and that they felt empowered by my struggle and my story with it. So I, it felt like a good choice. I was happy to do that. Um, but it was, it was difficult. It was a challenge for sure. Well, well, thanks for um, making the emotional shift, given that we had a um, an interruption in our conversation because of uh, oh, a power yeah. interruption. And, and thanks for sharing that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, no problem. And, and I wanted to, I'm sure that, um, I guess to continue on that note for a second, I'm sure that I will resonate with, with a lot of people. Um, so, you know, kudos for stepping out with one of your first, if not your first single uh, and, 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 um, putting forth that message. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's kind of my job, you know, to be vulnerable is all. (laughs) Be yourself. Yeah. Um, and tell, tell me by the way, um, you mentioned, uh, that it is probably coming out on the third or the 10th, um, both of May. Yeah. Um, that one, um, 
sorry, Tell Me is Tell Me's been released. It's got released maybe about a, a month and a half ago, but the third single um, will be released in May. Thank you. See, I'm all discombobulated because I got so frustrated by my power but, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, honestly, I, that's I, fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that's great. Um, as you uh, mentioned possibly before we hit proverbial record, but... Um, that may be the date everyone's one of those dates may be the one that everyone's going to be hearing this conversation and the 10th is my birthday so that, either oh, one would really? be great <laughs> either one would oh, be great yeah. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll release it on your birthday then it'll be a birthday present to you just for me right <laughs> that's great just for you <laughs> that's amazing so I had made a oh, note great. I had made a note to ask you about All True Creative and you just happened to mention it and the uh, producer and team that you're working with there. How did you hook up with them and tell me a little bit about them? Um, so it's two guys, one's Tim and one's John. Um, and John and I have actually been friends for, uh, a while, several years, maybe five or six years. Um, and we kind of like, he'd helped me with some vocal production. We collaborated on a couple other projects, but when it came time to do my solo stuff, um, I just really, I connected with Tim over some kind of really, uh, less popular groups of music groups that we kind of shared like similar musical interests, I guess is what it was. So I thought, Hey, if this guy likes this type of music, if he likes this particular act, then I want to try and do something with him. Um, so we just went in we did power together and, uh, just the first half of the song, but we were in there for, uh, for about 12 hours straight. Honestly, we didn't leave the studio. Um, so kind of was in was like, all right, this guy gets me. Um, so it worked out really well. I, so it was cool. I think they met at Bonnaroo and just connected and decided, Hey, let's go into business together. Let's help some developing artists. And they've done uh, some really cool stuff around town in Nashville and helped some um, really talented artists and they're doing really good work. So it's cool to be, to watch them help me with my stuff, but also watch them help other artists um, in any type of facet that they need help with and really do do well at it. So it's cool. Yeah, they seem a little like, yeah, I don't know if I should put this tag on them, but they're sort of a one-stop shop, kind of, um, for maybe not just emerging artists, but let's say for emerging artists among others. It looks like they, they're they um, doing different things um, from production, maybe collaborative assistance, uh, marketing, mm-hmm. uh, maybe some press stuff. Is that right? Yeah, totally. Uh, I think... Uh, that was kind of, I think that's their main goal is to be able to say, Hey, you know, we like you, we like the stuff that you're doing, whether you have three demos and absolutely no idea where to go from here, or if you've released a couple things and you have a little more of, you're more sure footed in what you want with your artistry. This is what we can offer you kind of like a la carte, like take a look at all these services that we provide. We want to help you. And how can we make this the best, you know, how can we make you, uh, help you along further in your career just because that's just what they want to do was just help artists kind of like wherever they are in their journey. That's cool. So that's cool. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know many people in Nashville that are doing something like what they're doing. So it's, um, it's, it's interesting to watch and super, super cool and rewarding just for me to be a part of it as well. They've got a good group of people over there and they all really just want to help <laughs> and make, you know, cool stuff with cool people and it's working. So yeah. And then uh, I was going to ask you about also had on the list of things I was curious about that I thought others um, would potentially find interesting was about your uh, PR rep. If I am hopefully I'm I'm labeling her the right way. But um, Brittany or, or BB, is she part of that team or did she come from another place? Oh, she came from um, she actually actually came through a connection that I made through All True, but she is not. Um, she's got her own PR company based out in LA, and she's fantastic. She's like, I actually, <laughs> I texted. I'm not to be like totally transparent. I texted her before this podcast interview, being like, I'm gonna mess it up. I'm not interesting. Like, no one's gonna care. And she's like, No, you got this. <laughs> so she gave me a little pep, a pep talk before. So she's kind of, she's been really, really helpful. She's like a PR, but also um, I'm able to bounce my ideas off of her and, you know, just connect with her as a friend as well. She's super supportive and really hardworking. So I would plug her services to anyone listening to this podcast, but I'm afraid if you do, that you're going to take her from me. So <laughs> I shouldn't <laughs> sell her too much because I want her. I want her for me. She's so great. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Well, you know, and hopefully she'll she'll listen to this. But I, um, 
I'd had some back and forth with her. She was sending me things on your behalf and I was just telling her, oh, this is great. I wish all my guests had someone like you working for them. And she got a kick out of it. And, uh, yeah, we had a, we yeah, had a funny no, meal. So yeah, she yeah, sounds like she's, she's with it. Super- yeah, she's super on top of it and diligent and thorough and just a, a wonderful person, super open-minded as is. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked. I feel very, very lucky. I feel I'm not blind to the fact that I have um, before that I have managed to make enough connections prior to kind of stepping out as a solo artist to really have like a good group of people around me that um, that can that know what I don't know, you know? So it's like, I don't feel like I'm the smartest person on the team. I feel like sometimes I have less of an idea of what's going on than everybody else, which is great because I feel like I, they're constantly teaching me things that I don't know and pushing me to like be braver and more open and work harder and work smarter. So I'm really lucky, like super lucky. Well, that's great. And they, they sound, they seem um, lucky to have you. So I'm, I'm curious, you mentioned maybe this has a nice crossover to um, the world of just being an artist anyway, but you were worried about our conversation today, thinking that you weren't interesting enough. What, what, yeah. um, what was the, what was the, the conversation in your head and what did BB say to you? Um, she, does she go by BB, BB or Brittany? A, she's Brittany, but her name is Brittany Bowen. So she, she'll sign it off with the BB or Brittany Bowen either way. Um, Oh, but, so you just gave out uh, your PR rep's name. Now everyone's going to go looking for no, it. Just kidding. No, no, everyone, no, no. <laughs> so yeah, well, we, t- too great to lose. Tell me how you were beating oh, yourself man. up or whatever you were making yourself nervous about. What did she say to you? Um, I was just kind of saying like, I don't, how could I possibly be interesting enough to fill a whole podcast? And she's like, no, you're very interesting. Like you're funny and got your stuff together and you're well-spoken. And I'm like, you're right. I do that. Like, this is great. So, and I think it's, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that it's how I kind of describe being an artist for me, at least, I think that there are some people who are born to be on the stage. Like they have that skill set, They have that charisma and that personality and they just like live for it. And they do really well there. That's not something that I, the reason I, I mean, I'm 27 and the reason I feel like I'm, I'm a late bloomer in terms of stepping out in a solo artist way. Um, I've been behind the scenes for six, five, six years now, longer than that, but professionally for about five years. Um, and I think part of the reason I was dragging my feet is because that's not something that like really appeals to me, um, kind of opening up and sharing my personal life and my thoughts and trying to be constantly like a bleeding heart, like a bleeding open heart to everyone to hopefully find people that can connect with me and my story. Um, so it is, it's interesting to have people who want to talk to me or have a podcast or do an interview. And I'm like, man, this is bizarre. I really just am trying to write songs and do stuff that I think is cool and put it out there. And it's just, it is, it feels, it feels like they're trying to talk to another person. Like they're not really interested in me, you know, because it just doesn't feel like, I don't feel that special. So it's really, it, it's like a super big compliment when people are interested in what I'm doing. But it also feels kind of like, are you sure? Like, are you sure you're not going to, you know, you yeah. haven't made a mistake. There's not someone else cooler with a better story or more something or other than I am. I just feel very normal. So <laughs> a podcast seems like not something a normal person does. Well, you're, you're helping my audience and you're helping me. So what, what changed that um, you spent... Uh, I'm presuming that five years prior to about now, about this point in time that you were doing a lot of collaborative things, being featured on things, doing quite well, but what changed that um, made you decide you'd go ahead and, and step out not only um, as an artist, but as a person? Um, I think that, uh, honestly, I was kind of like looking at not to bring up age because it doesn't matter to some people, but it does, it does matter to me because the music industry does put a lot of emphasis on your age, um, especially as a woman and a young woman. Um, so I was kind of like staring down the barrel at 30 going like, is this, am I happy doing this collaborative stuff? Like, does this truly fulfill me or do I feel like I have more? Like, is there more in me, something that's more true to me, that I really want to get out? And the answer was yes. And I was like, you know, if it's not now, it's going to be never because, and I'm going to be disappointed in myself in 10 years, five years, three years from now, if I don't 
do something that makes me feel like, dang, like that's me. Like that's me and my story and my sound. And I got to push the envelope creatively and I did it because I wanted to and not because I thought like this is going to make me money or this is a good way to like to write a hit song or this is a, a you know a good step in my career it just felt like a good step for me and I kind of was thinking if I don't do it now when am I ever going to do it and if I don't just find the courage to do it now when am I ever going to do that so just kind of seemed like I woke up one day and was like oh my gosh I'm running out of time and I want to do it and and then I just did it. <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't that funny how the decades do that? I I just today's featured guest is a, a two timer on the podcast. His name's Chris Taylor, and he's on, quite honestly one of the most creative people I've I've um, spoken with. Uh, he's a he's a, a songwriter and an artist, and he's just produced a t- self produced a ton of music, and he's maybe doing one of his um, first collaborative projects. Uh, and he just unearthed a band that. Uh, dates back to the 90s that he was in. But he was telling me uh, in our conversation that he says, I'm about to turn 50. And um, I decided this is in his um, his little his Patreon ecosystem, <clears throat> where he's got his, his super fans. And he said, I'm going to give them, I decided it's a time to sort of look back and let some things go. So I'm going to give my, my people inside Patreon a, a, a time window to just download anything and everything from my past catalog. And then I'm just going to lay it to rest and we're going to move forward. And he was, you know, being, well, I don't guess he was being silly. I think you're sort of going, maybe, you know, somewhat going through similar um, feelings in in your own way, but he, he loves to paint and he was saying, you know, I'm just sort of envisioning myself, you know, in 10 more years being out on a farm and painting and maybe they'll find my, my, my body all painted up somewhere when I'm dead and gone. But, <laughs> yeah, right. but it was just funny how he was, he was also looking at, you know, um, a, uh, I guess a, uh, not monumental, but a, a significant point in time, but I get that. I, I get that. Um, uh, what you're going through and yeah yeah lucky all of us that you you did that and you know I was just thinking you can always collaborate again and you can always you know go back and forth yeah. and this sounds like you're having a great time doing what you're doing yeah and I mean I, I still am doing the collaborative stuff I'm doing a lot more writing um than I am doing the featured vocalist work but I still have a lot of collaboration um outside of my own artist stuff and surprisingly my artist my solo artist stuff which was kind of what I was hoping for um, people have heard it and responded to it saying, you know, this is really cool. And I like your vibe. Like, would you want to help me create something similar for myself? Like I kind of was like, this is who I am. This is the sound that I create, you know, alone in the dark over my piano, <laughs> you know, and this is kind of my vibe. And if you respond to it and you want to work with me kind of in something in a similar, you know, arena, let me know. And a lot of people have been like, yes, and yes. And when can you do it? And that's been super cool to have people respond to me and my own artist work rather than just something I felt like was just a well-written song technically or checked all the boxes for, you know, somebody else, but that my stuff is checking all the boxes for me. And there are other people out in the universe that go, you know, you're checking the same boxes that I want to check. Can you help me do that? And I'm like, sure. For, absolutely. I love collaborating. I still get to do it. Um, but it is nice to kind of put shift the a little bit onto kind of something that feels like my dream, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, and I want to say that's amazing, you know, that you're getting that response and this might be a good time for me to mention some things that I, I was reading in your, um, press kit and before I got to it, the stuff that I'm about to recite that, um, I was looking at your, your Spotify plays. I'm like, Oh wow, this is pretty good. You know? Um, so in your press kit, 2.5 million plus streams on Spotify and feature, and you were, you've been featured on several of their playlists, uh, which are listed there in your, in your, in your press kit, 3.1 million plays on YouTube coverage on Sirius XM radio, edm.com and a lot of other places I didn't list here. And, um, lots of awards, um, too, and including, let's see, um, Man, you're making me sound like way cooler. Well, you know, <laughs> I want to I want to give some perspective. Wow. I want to give some perspective here to, to lead up to my next question. And and if, if you want to see the details of all this that I just read, and you're listening, you can check it out at notelmusic.com forward slash press. And Notel is n o t e l l e music dot com um, forward slash press. And as long as I'm at it at Notel Music on Instagram. Her jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I, I wanted to mention all that just to say, uh, you know, having given a little context to 
to the trajectory of your career, what would you say to an artist who is maybe in a similar situation where they've been doing some collaborative work or maybe they haven't, they haven't even had that opportunity yet, but they're, they're just, um, maybe stalling, maybe procrastinating, maybe self-conscious, whatever self-talk might go through their head that's keeping them from, um, getting their music out there. What's your, what would you say to them? Um, I think that there's a couple of things is that one is that for them to recognize that it doesn't matter where you are on the, your perceived ladder of success or where anybody else is, everyone feels the exact same way. Everyone feels like they're not doing enough or everyone feels like that goal is unobtainable or everyone feels lost at some point. And if they aren't, I would love to know what vitamins they're taking in the morning because I would love some of those because that seems like a, I, that seems insane if they don't ever doubt themselves. Um, but so I think that just knowing that you are not alone in that kind of struggle of how do I do this? Where do I start? That type of stuff. Everyone faces that. And then the second thing is that knowing that like you and whoever you are and whatever you have personality wise, your strengths, your weaknesses, those are the biggest assets that you have because no one is going to know you or work harder for you than you are going to. And a lot of the way that I got into collaborative stuff is honestly um, just cold emailing, thinking like, whatever, I'm just going to just like Hail Mary after Hail Mary after Hail Mary being like, eventually something is going to catch. And eventually someone's going to go, this person's working hard. They're good at their job. They're responsive and on top of it. And they do quality work and a reasonable time. And that started working for me is constantly, constantly like a squeaky wheel gets the oil and working really, really hard for myself until I found people that said, Hey, I want to work with you too, because you're working hard for yourself. No one's going to do it for you, but you are the person who's going to be able to do it the best for yourself. So just like whatever you think that you can't do, talk to people who are doing it and work backwards from there. So (laughs) say you want to you know, you know what I mean? Like, say yep. you want to sell out Madison Square Garden, close your eyes. And like, if that's what you picture, like, let's move backwards from there. If that's step 100, what's step 99? What's step 89? What's step 50? What's step whatever? And kind of move towards of that, like move forward of that list towards your goal that way. And kind of hard work and a plan of action is always going to be the best. And knowing that, like, again, you are your greatest asset. So that's always worked for me. And that's something that my father kind of instilled in me is don't be lazy because no one, no one cares if you're, you know, no one cares that just, uh, what you do. Don't, um, don't whine, he probably care. said. Work hard. <laughs> yeah, honestly, just kind of like put, put your boots on and do it kind of thing. So, hmm. and if you're not going to do it, who's going to do it for you? No one's going to rescue you. So you got to do it yourself and you're going to do it better than someone else would do it anyway. So you got uh, it. It's kind of what I would say. Do you have, um, mentors uh specifically in the music scene it sounds like uh, your dad was definitely one and maybe he was in the music scene but do you have some others that that um are recent that have kind of emerged along the way of your collaborative and now solo career um i had i think i had one growing up his name was mike boyd he was um super helpful for me when i was for he was my like a uh, high school jazz teacher but he also kind of helped me understand what I wanted to do. And that when I was sitting down at the piano and writing songs and little tunes and things like that, that what I was, that I was a songwriter was kind of the label that I could put it on and put on that and kind of helps me figure out, you know, what are the potential outlets for an interest like this? Um, And kind of, as I've moved along, there have been people that have been super helpful and willing to sit down with me and talk with me and say, you know, these are the, these are the things are going to come up again. And here's how you can, prepare yourself for them. Um, there hasn't been one person in particular that I would say this is my go-to mentor, but I have, I feel like I've been lucky enough to have conversations with five to 10 people throughout my career that really have been kind of altering in how I look at my next step. Um, and people that have experienced things that I know that I'm going to experience and I'm going to come up against Mm -hmm. and they've been able and willing. What are some of the things, is there anything that stands out in your, um, some of these past conversations, that that fit into the 
sort of just example that you gave where you said there, the, here are some of the things that you'll come up against and here's how you can deal with them. Is there anything that to memory that kind of jumps out as one of those um, things that you got yeah. help with? Um, I think one of the, it seems a little more general than less specific, but uh, that there's, there's no such thing as luck that no one just gets lucky. What they do is they work really hard and have all their ducks in a row, whether that's they have their brand on point and they have been constantly creating content that's solid and good and organized and makes sense. So when that quote unquote luck strikes, it's actually, they were very prepared for the opportunity to have a really big meeting or go and play a really big showcase that they have been working really hard and preparing for moments like that, knowing that when it did happen, they weren't going, Oh my gosh, now I have to release a song and now I have to figure out my brand. They were working on this constantly until that opportunity struck. And that's how people quote, you know, come out of nowhere or get lucky. It's not luck. It's just a consistent preparation for when that happens. Um, and I think the other thing in terms, uh, another good piece of advice that I got was in terms of developing your artist's sound and what you like to do was someone kind of told me that the, uh, the biggest act that they've ever managed um, got big because they were just making music that they liked. That They were like, you know what? I like this. This is what I want to do. This seems cool. I don't really care what anybody else is doing. This is what I want to do. And now they're, one of the largest acts in the world, honestly, I'd name drop them. That would feel weird. But <laughs> that to me was like, man, that, that was great advice. Being like, put your blinders on and write what you like. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Cause you don't want to be a diet cola version <laughs> yeah, of yeah. somebody else. You know? I've heard, you I've heard that. Uh, yeah. I've heard that across um, creative disciplines. Um, and, and it doesn't exist everywhere, obviously, but um, yeah, it's a, a bit of a recurring theme when I, um, listen to and read about creative individuals that they are often not really paying attention to what anyone else is doing. They're just making stuff that really speaks to them and it works out uh, very well in, in their, their career in terms of um, creating something that people love. Right. Yeah. Um, as one time someone told me that, that you either have to be the absolute best or you have to be unique and I, there's no way in hell that I'll ever be the absolute best. So I'm trying my best to be unique. And the only way that I can be unique is by being myself because I don't, everyone, no one else, you know what I mean? There's no one else in the universe like me or like you or like Brittany or like Tim or so it's kind of, kind of always returning to yourself as kind of the North star there will always help you be unique um, and not feel like it's a falsified or, but you know, fake uniqueness. It's an actual true uniqueness. Yeah. There, um, there's an artist who spent a lot of time in your neck of the woods there in Nashville who, uh, returned a little closer to his home. I believe he's based in Dallas, Texas. Now his name's John Christopher Davis. And he's had a lot of, um, success in, as a songwriter, um, licensing things. And he's still enjoying the heck out of what he's doing. But, uh, Right. You, you were talking a lot about hard work and, and, uh, I think without even mentioning those words, he said something else that spoke at it from another direction. He goes, you know, the thing is, is m- m- the music business isn't, and never has been a talent contest. <laughs> it's about, you know, right. there, there's not a lot of luck, you know, you just, you have to work. And, and even when I, um, when I hear people say, oh man, that person is a genius and yeah, they are a genius, but you know, they worked really hard too. <laughs> Right. Totally. Yeah. And it's, um, and it, it feel it feels kind of weird for me to be talking as if like I have it all figured out because I don't, but that's, those are the couple of things that have always proven to be like uh tried and true advice and tried and true things that I can fall back on is hard work and don't try to copy anyone, be myself and kind of rely on myself and, you know, work really hard. It's, it's just that there is no, I was listening to an interview one time with, um, oh my gosh, now I can't even remember his name. Lord, it was a famous comedian. That's going to drive me crazy. But one of the things said, one of the things that he said in his interview as well was the same thing. Like there are no tricks. There's no things that I can tell you that are going to, you're going to strike it lucky and be big because you did X, Y, and Z because you had this punchline or because you delivered it like this, or because you wore this outfit. There is, there's nothing but hard work. And if, you're afraid of it, then 
then that's, that's the answer. Then it might just be like a hobby that you find a lot of joy in, but like, you can't, you cannot make a career on anything at all without hard work. It doesn't matter if you want to be, you know, you want to make shoes or you want to build buildings or you want to fly spaceships or you want to write music. It's like, my dad showed me that. And my mom as well. They're both kind of self-made, wonderful career people. And it's like the hard work. What did they do? what it is. Um, my mom's an accounting professor um, at a couple schools in Virginia. And then my dad is a real estate developer. And he, um, yeah, they both worked really, really hard. They didn't come from much, but they've worked very hard and instilled that in me. And I have three brothers. And all of us, I feel like, are very, very driven and almost probably to a, to a fault. <laughs> we probably, I think we probably suffer from, you know, workaholic isms and perfectionist isms and all that stuff. But if those are my, if those are my battles that they've given me. Then I got really lucky. So, well, it's all, it's all good as long as you're taking care of yourself. Well, right. given everything that's going on, you, um, made me want to ask what the, um, where you are in terms of the strategy for releasing music and, and really just managing your career moving forward. And, um, maybe we can just talk about these next two or three years because they seem to be, be very significant to you. What's uh yeah. What's the strategy you're sort of outlaying for yourself or thinking about? Um, I think it's, uh, I have three more singles to release, um, just from this first kind of like five single batch. Um, and I'll probably roll them each out every two to three months, uh, alongside with like individual press campaigns and playing a bunch of shows in Nashville and just kind of, uh, continually pushing it with, uh, content, whether that's music videos or interviews or, um, uh, kind of like small teaser trailer things around like visual content, um, around each single, uh, and just seeing kind of like what does well, since I'm a new a solo artist, there is a lot of throwing things to the wall and seeing what sticks like throwing everything out there and seeing kind of what people respond to. It does, it does provide a lot of freedom there in terms of the strategy. But if I got down to the nitty gritty, it would be releasing a single every two to three months with strong content around it and playing shows and playing shows and playing shows and playing shows. Um, Cause it seems like that's the best way to have people, to have people let me know, get honest feedback, read the room, read the comments about what people feel and what's working for me and what's not. What's your favorite, what's your favorite thing to do right now with your music? Um, and by that, I mean, are you, is, um, performing live at specific types of places, a thing, or is it being in the studio or something else? Um, I've found a lot of joy in being in the studio and creating it and kind of finding those little moments, uh, in the song where you're like, man, that's a really cool sound. or That's an incredibly inspiring melody or what if we took it this way instead? Uh, the ability to be really kind of creative and exploring and weird with it is kind of <laughs> where I found a lot of joy, which I was surprised by. Um, doing it with great people also helps too, but definitely the production end. How about videos? Are you thinking of, um, I know you've done some, are you thinking about doing a little more of that in the coming months? Yeah. Um, yes, I have. So tell me, I should have a, a shoot lined up kind of mid end of April, um, which I'm really excited about. I've never done a music video before, like a full length video. So that does kind of, does seem a little daunting. Like I said, with the whole me not liking the spotlight, not being drawn to it kind of thing. Um, but I have, I've had a couple really creative, like innovative people, um, approach me and said that they liked the stuff that I was, the content that I was releasing and they were down to kind of explore and push the envelope a little bit with a video concept. Um, so yeah, we have something cool lined up. It's the song tell me is about, um, kind of like vices and leaning into them, even though you kind of know you shouldn't be doing it. Um, but it definitely has a darker feel to it. Right. Um, so the video that we're going to be working on is definitely kind of, kind of like lean into that, which is cool. Yes. I'm excited about. I look forward to that. I hope you'll send me a little email uh, to let me know when it's out. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I will. So you've done, given all the collaborative work that you've done, there were a couple things I was just curious about. Um, one of them is just what, which ones come top of mind when someone asks, asks you or what I'm about to ask you is as your favorite, what, what, are, what have been your favorite collaborations or collaboration? 
Um, I think, uh, one of, one of the more recent ones was just a song that I was, I was proud of, um, just writing wise was a song that I wrote with, uh, someone named Brittany Canarazzi. She goes by Luma and her Instagram is at her name is Luma for anybody who is listening and wants to check her out. How do you She's spell a that? featured vocalist. Uh, Luma L U M A. Okay. So it's just at her name is Luma. Okay. Um, she's wonderful. I call her like my work wife. She's basically like my go-to songwriting collaborator. Um, <laughs> she re- cut a song that we wrote together called breathe without. And we pitched it to a DJ named Nurko N U R K O. Mm-hmm. Um, and they released it maybe end of January. And that, um, that was probably one of the songs that I've written recently that I've been like, dang, you know, I really like this song and it doesn't even feel like I wrote it because I like it. And I think that's kind of how you can, that's a, that's a cool moment to be a writer and be like, I don't even remember creating this. Like this doesn't even feel like it came out of me, but I really like that song. And that was fun to write and it was fun to connect with her just alone with the piano, just her and I, and then give it to a producer and have them build a whole new life into it and it was it's cool it's done pretty well too i mean she's got a great voice and he's a great producer and so that was fun i think that's probably my most favorite recent collaboration for sure how did you um come to work with with djs which i presume is something you've done quite a bit uh, maybe that's mm-hmm. not accurate but how did you um come to find that as in um something that you're gravitated toward um i've always been a fan of electronic music um, I went to, I've been to like 14 or 15 different festivals. Um, so I love kind of the environment and the culture around it. It definitely feels like more of a, like a new age hippie type of situation, which I kind of like. <laughs> um, uh, and I, I had a, a friend of mine from the East coast. He's actually a, a nurse, but he loved electronic music and he followed them all, like all of his favorite artists, small, large and in, in between on social media and saw that a bunch of them were posting like, Hey, we need a vocalist for this or that. And I can't write lyrics or I don't want to sing this. Can, is there somebody who does? And he knew that I was a songwriter. So he kind of sent my stuff to them. Just honestly, I feel like just to see if it worked and also to kind of see if he could talk to his, his people he was a fan of. And they responded and said, Hey, yeah, we like her voice and we like her writing style. Would you connect us? So he connected me to my first two or three DJs. And then, kind of went from there. Um, and it's cool. It's like a, it's a really cool position to be in. Cause you just get to write a song and then you get to give it to somebody and then they get to move it on down the line. So and it, it gives a life and access to people that you wouldn't have access to normally. That's nice. It's a world I am so, I feel so barely acquainted with. I, you know, I'm exposed to it all the time and, and, uh, enjoy it from time to time. But I feel I know so, so little about it and hearing um, just that sort of brief description of how um, it came into your life or what the appeal is uh, sort of puts an exclamation point on that. So definitely something to explore who, who, um, okay. So Nurko, do you have another um, DJ that might be fun for me to check out just to sort of explore? Um, just in terms of someone that I really like mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. someone that I've collaborated with. But hmm. Either, either or both. I think uh, someone that I have not collaborated with, but I absolutely love his work, is a house DJ called Lane 8, like L-A-N-E, and then just 8. Um, he's incredibly talented. I don't know him personally. I'm just a big fan. Um, definitely kind of laid back and really melodic. He's done some cool stuff. Um, and then, Lord, I'm trying to think of... Is, uh, he, um, is, he, is he a young guy, Lane 8? No, I think he's... He's uh, a little bit older. I don't want to, you know, blow up his spot by <laughs> dropping his age in there. But I think he's older than me. Um, is so he, is he's he on, pretty is established. He, he's had a, is he on Spotify? I'm just kind of like trying to figure out if I'm looking at the... Looking yeah, at the, yeah. It's just one one guy, Lane 8, L-A-N-E, and then 8. Okay, yeah. Um, so he's he's he, Denver-based DJ and producer. Does that sound? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, he's great. We'll check that out. Well, thanks for <laughs> that little, um, it was like a little education for me to like try and be more familiar with it. And, and, oh my uh, gosh. and it's just like a big genre, of course, I'm sure to, um, to explore, um, 
Mm-hmm. Oh, it's unbelievable. I had uh, someone ask me the other day, I was talking to someone the other day about uh, like bass music. And he was like, bass music is a combina- combination of uh, this genre and that genre. And like, if that one too, kind of, they all had a baby. And I was like, I've never even heard of those genres. <laughs> I just, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm like, I work in electronic music. That's like essentially my job. And you just reference things that I'm like, what in the world? It seems like there's 60 subgenres. There's like a, in, oh, yeah. in electronic music. So even if you're involved in it, you'd still, even if you just, all you did was <laughs> pour into it for like three years, someone would say something to you to make you feel like a total novice. So don't, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> We're on the same page. <laughs> Speaking of genrefication, I, um, I don't know if it's on your website or someone, but it's probably somebody writing about you that um, your uh, music is described as heavy, messy pop. And I'm like, that's perfect. I don't know if, I don't know how you feel about that. Um, personally and usually yeah. when I, yeah, I'm good usually when I mention it people you know the genre that's stuck in is like well we got to put a label on it of some sort don't we <laughs> right yeah because it's yeah so I've I uh, I I think the heavy messy pop thing is like pretty pretty spot on because it's uh it's definitely darker and um definitely kind of more ex- exploratory I don't even know if that's the word I was an English major I should probably know but uh <laughs> But it's definitely, it is pop kind of at the end of the day in terms of the structure and kind of where my writing background comes from. Like I am a pop writer. Um, so it does have a true chorus. It does have, it might not have a bridge, depends on whether I want one or not. But just the structure of the song is definitely pop, but everything around it isn't. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I try to, I think the heavy, messy thing works. So I'm happy to stamp myself with that. If I need well, to be genre fied, I'm down for that one. <laughs> cool. Well, Notel, thank you so much, not only for spending time with me today, but also um, uh, humoring me and the uh, power outage and interruption and hanging tight, spending a little extra time with me. I really appreciate it. It's been Oh, no, it was it's been perfect. Fun. It was great. I had a great time. Thank you for making me feel interesting. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are indeed. Uh, listen to your to your publicist, and so we are at the end of um, this episode. Just in seconds away, you listeners, we're you're going to be hearing uh, a track called "Power," one of Notel's most recent ones, and it's quite cool. So give it a listen, and Notel, I will talk to you soon. upon a time I never knew you Now you're all I know You're all I cling to And I I fell in love with fire And I Hey, thanks for listening. Question for you. Are you struggling to move your music journey forward? 
I can help, if not personally, then by referring you to the next best available resources. Schedule a free 15-minute call with me to find out if I can indeed help you. It's easy. Just visit unstarvingmusician.com forward slash coaching to schedule your call today. Look for links to just about everything covered in this episode in the show notes at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast. This episode was powered by the Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs, How to Get Booked and Paid What You're Worth over and over again. It's available on paperback, Kindle, and ebooks just about everywhere you can find them. It's also available as a standalone podcast called the Unstarving Musician's Guide Podcast. You can learn more about the book and companion podcast at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash book. I'd love it if you picked up a copy and would love it even more if you left a review. With much gratitude, peace, love, and more cowbell.